Y'all, thank you for coming. Holly May, thank you for being here. As you know, and we thank you for coming, uh, we, are, we want to be sure that everyone in the state is kept up to date with the latest information. Uh, so uh, here we are to give you some information and answer questions. Dr. Rick Toomey of DHEC. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. As you know, we are continuing to monitor and respond to possible cases of COVID-19 or the coronavirus in South Carolina. At this time, the risk of, con um, of contraction of COVID-19 remains low to the general public. We, along with our state partners and public health officials around the state, have been preparing for the introduction of COVID-19 in our state. It is here and our systems for limiting spread and caring for those affected are working. As an update from late yesterday, DHEC received a presumptive positive result for one additional individuals who were tested for the novel coronavirus, COVID-19. Dr. Bell and her comments will provide a little bit more information. Currently, we are uh, on the monitoring of patients we have completed or those We've completed 56, 16 remain in monitoring. Of those tested, we have 24 negatives, seven positives of the 31 tests that we have conducted to date. With regards to the recent Richland, 1, Richland District 1 announcement, DHEC did not advise students to stay home from school or self-quarantine. DHEC is not aware of anyone being tested. School districts should consult with DHEC prior to making decisions or announcements such as this. Governor. Thank you. <clears throat> Today, we participated in a video conference with Vice President Pence, Surgeon General Jerome Adams, and Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar, whom we had had conversations with before to report on how Team South Carolina is responding to the virus. Healthcare authorities in South Carolina continue to follow established protocols and procedures to address the virus. There is no cause for public alarm or speculation. Schools will remain open. Schools will remain open. And state government offices in all 46 counties will also stay open. South Carolinians should continue their normal daily routines and responsibilities. It's important to remember that each individual, each of us is responsible for their own actions and personal hygiene. That's for our own benefit, your own benefit, and that of the community. All South Carolinians should continue to follow the recommendations and information provided by the official sources, and you've all heard it and seen it over and over. Cover your cough for sneezes. Wash your hands with soap and warm water throughout the day. If you feel sick, stay home and contact your daughter, your, excuse me, your doctor. Or from home, you can do something in South Carolina. You can consult with a doctor for free, for free with MUSC, that's the Medical University of South Carolina's online virus, uh, coronavirus website. And that is found at musc.care, musc.care. As of this morning, 1,178 people have logged on to that website and have been screened by medical professionals. Again, ours is the only state that we know of that has this free service. As DHEC has pointed out, there's no shortage of testing kits in South Carolina. Your local doctor or health care professional can get you tested if they believe it is necessary. It is inevitable that more South Carolinians will get tested in the days and weeks ahead, and it is likely that we will have more presumptive positive cases. For perspective, the Surgeon General told us today that the coronavirus has a lower threat of mortality with children and young adults than the regular flu does. That's what he told me today in the meeting we had earlier, the video conference. Elderly people with underlying pre-existing health conditions, 
such as obesity, diabetes, respiratory or heart disease are particularly vulnerable to the coronavirus. We have seen that. Dr. Bell. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. Late yesterday afternoon, March 8th, DHEC received a presumptive po positive result for an additional individual who was tested for the novel coronavirus COVID-19. The older man is a direct contact, meaning he had close face-to-face -face contact with a presumptive uh, with a previously announced presumptive positive case. He is also from Camden. He was evaluated at a healthcare facility. He is not hospitalized and is currently isolated at home. He was, excuse me, uh, with these new presumptive positive cases, we now have indication of community spread in Camden. However, I want to reassure, to reassure the public that DHEC has been preparing for the introduction of this virus in South Carolina for weeks and we have planned, prepared, and tested our ability to respond to public health, like, uh, public health threats like COVID-19. Our contact investigation protocol is working as we are appropriately identifying and connecting with individuals who could have been exposed to this illness. This helps us to limit potential spread while we continue to also identify potential exposures based on travel or other relevant history. It's all of our responsibilities to help prevent the spread of illness. Our key recommendations at this time are to stay home from work or school and to avoid public gatherings to protect others in the community if you are sick. Reach out to your healthcare provider if you are showing symptoms such as fever, cough, or shortness of breath. If an individual doesn't have a primary healthcare provider, MUSC Health is providing free, telehealth screening to all South Carolinians. Anyone experiencing symptoms can visit MUSC.care and be screened without having to leave home. You can reach out to MUSC for more details on its telehealth screening. We're still learning about this virus and we are committed to keeping the public informed. As we learn more, we will continue to provide updates as quickly and as timely as possible. I'd like to reemphasize that each of us has a responsibility to prevent the spread of disease, to protect our family, our coworkers, our community. Please stay home if you are sick and continue to practice good hygiene. I want to thank all of our public health officials, healthcare providers and healthcare facilities and various leaders and groups across our state for their continued dedication to protecting the safety and health of South Carolinians. For the latest information, I encourage you to visit our website at scdhec.gov slash COVID-19. Thank you, and I'm happy to take any questions. Does anyone have questions? I, of course. I, in yes, ma'am. In five days, thousands of people are going to descend into five points for St. Patrick's Day Festival. I know that right now we're saying to avoid crowds. What's the expectation there? We're um, asking people to avoid crowds if they have symptoms. If we're in a community where we don't have evidence of ongoing spread, which is not the case in uh, Columbia area, for example, so there's no reason to alter our uh, routine activities. There's no reason at this time to cancel any public events or take any special measures when there is no evidence of ongoing spread in a community. Governor, you yes, said all office buildings are open now. What yes, is the trigger for deciding to close? What would cause that decision and who makes it? Well, to, to closing the state offices, of course, is, is, would be up to, to me, up to the, to the governor. But we are nowhere near that. And uh, we will keep everyone informed on exactly what the progress is. But there's no reason to do that. What about schools? Who makes that there's decision? There's no, no reason to do that either. Dr. Toomey? No, we are... I, with regards to the question about schools, we are in constant contact with the uh, school officials and working with them to make sure they have the latest information and there's no recommendation at this time for them to take any action such as that. Dr. Tribune, on, uh, on Saturday it was said that both, pati both patients then had received their tests on March 5th, that was Thursday. We didn't hear about the presumptive positive test till Friday evening. Why did DHEC wait until Monday? Well, the <clears throat> the question is, is the time lag between a DHEC test from our lab 
to the time that it goes to CDC and, C and CDC responds to us with an affirmative positive. The CDC, we received the two presumptive positive confirmations today. So the CDC is collecting samples from multiple states, from all the states. So we cannot control their turnaround timeline. Uh, and so we received it today. I'm sorry. So we, we recommend that schools continue to take the measures that they've always taken to exclude individuals if they're sick. Um, and this is something that we, we cannot emphasize more. It's the message that we've, that we've always given and it is the message that it's effective. If uh, students or staff members are ill, they should stay home. There's no reason for other individuals who are not having symptoms to curtail their activities. And so we have guidance for schools for a variety of conditions for the measures that they're supposed to take for each specific diagnosis. But we, um, but we ask that people monitor for symptoms and stay home if they're sick. Do you think the Richland one notification was pushed out too early? Without information about uh, widespread um, transmission of the disease in the community, there's no reason to do uh, school closures and there's no reason to ask individuals who are not sick to stay home or to quarantine uh, if they haven't been in contact with someone who's diagnosed or someone, or they are someone who's ill. So that actually goes back to what could trigger that sort of decision? Is it the widespread, uh, it being widespread in the community that could cause something like that to close? We monitor absentee rates, but this is something that we take under consideration during each flu season, in fact. So even during this, uh, the flu pandemic, we were making plans for the possibility of school closures, and we've never, uh, have not taken that measure statewide. Occasionally, school districts do make their own decision if there are high absentee rates or if they don't have sufficient staff to provide a safe educational environment, but um, if there is not, um, evidence of ongoing spread in the community, there's no reason to close schools. Yes, ma'am. Over there. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. If one person's caught it face to face, um, could you confirm if it is still, could be airborne or not airborne? So, um, in healthcare settings, we have terms that have a specific meaning that might be different from what they mean to the general public. When we refer to airborne transmission, that means that there are very small micro droplets that remain suspended in the air for long periods of time. COVID-19 is not in that category. We consider it to be spread by respiratory droplets, which are larger droplets that actually do not remain suspended in the air for a long period of time. And that's how we define close contacts. If you've had close face-to-face -face contact with an individual who actively has symptoms, and um, could be exposed to those respiratory droplets, those larger respiratory droplets. To clarify, how many cases have we gotten back from the CDC for confirmed positives? We have confirmation from CDC of two cases. Director Jimmy, can you clarify, Richland one made the announcement about the five self-quarantine students without GX input, and that was not your recommendation? The question is, yes, they did not consult with us prior to that announcement. So we were not aware of their action decision. Uh, and if they had consulted with us, we probably would have, as has been said here, told them that that was not a necessary step. At this, at not a necessary step. Is GHEC testing the person that was mentioned in no. that press release? No. We're not aware of any test for that individual. And if you could clarify also, how many people have been tested? How many people have actually been self-quarantined? I can answer. We've tested 31. No, let me make sure. We've tested 31 actual submissions of a test. 24 have been negative. Seven, as of yesterday afternoon, late, was positive. We've received from the CDC two confirmations of that seven. So five remain presumptive at this time. To go back to it, we are monitoring still, well, we've completed monitoring of 56 individuals. Those, a majority of those were travelers that have come back in from affected areas. We are currently monitoring that are still in the process, 16. And where the two that tested positive? The two that tested positive was, um, in Camden, Kershaw County, and one Charleston County. Is there anything different in terms of airport protocol for travelers when they hit the airports? Um, anything different? Will you be scanning any of, any of them as they're going through the gates? Uh, 
no, not scanning individuals. The CDC has posted guidance for airports and airlines, and they have recommendations that should be taken if an individual is ill on a flight. And then there is an evaluation of passengers on the flight. Um, other than that, because of the large number of people that travel through airports, other measures are not necessary, and it's not possible to monitor those individuals in U.S. airports. Are you all having any issues with the folks who have been asked to self-quarantine? Is, is there a penalty if they break that quarantine? We have not had any issues with individuals who have uh, agreed to self-quarantine. And uh, should that occur, we do have measures that we can take. But it has not been an issue. Any measures for the students returning from spring break that may have traveled outside of the general area to areas that are affected? So for uh, students returning from spring break from areas that uh, we know to be impacted where there is ongoing disease transmission, we do ask that they monitor for symptoms and that they report uh, their symptoms of illness along with their travel history so that we can have that additional information to fully understand their potential risk. Does CHEC plan to open any specific location for testing? Any, have you concentrated at all in one area? Let me, uh, there's two answers to that. One, uh, DHEC right now is the lab, the public health lab that is authorized by the CDC to perform tests. LabCorp and Quest uh, have also received FDA approval late last week or early in the weekend. So that provides another means for testing within the state. Uh, doctor's offices can submit their samples now to, uh, to LabCorp or Quest. The MUSC, as we uh, mentioned, as Dr. Cole mentioned, has uh, requested uh, and is going through the process for their approvals for the FDA. Uh, Governor McMaster asked the FDA today to make sure they would consider and expedite that request. So we hope to see MUSC come on board. And the nice thing about that, the benefit is the more centers we have, it reduces the congestion of only having one site that is processing. Of course, we have only tested 31, so we're not overwhelmed. We have the capability of doing many more than that every day. And just a making an assumption that there might be a follow-up question, we have sufficient supplies for those tests. People refer to them as test kits. Test kits are for the labs, and each kit for us provides t opportunity for 500 tests. So we have one test kit and a second one. So we have the capability of over 1,000 tests at this point in time, and again, we've tested 31 and we have additional labs coming online for testing as well, and they will have the, kit, the test kits as well. What's the condition of the two confirmed positive um, patients right now, and where are they located, like which hospitals? Um, all of the uh, patients who have been reported to us as presumptive positive or confirmed positive are in stable condition and all are doing well, uh, both those who are hospitalized and those who are at home. Um, DHEC is, is providing additional guidance from the CDC for healthcare facilities, and we're also providing assistance from our healthcare associated infection section for uh, facilities. There, as you can imagine, there are a number of uh, questions about protocol and procedures, and so we are assisting with infection control practices, and uh, hospitals are following the routine guidelines for the various levels of isolation. No changes to hospital procedures statewide at this time. We continue to disseminate guidance from the CDC as new recommendations come out. Have What's you, the projected impact on healthcare workers throughout the state? I'm sorry, repeat please. Is there please? any projected impact on healthcare workers throughout the state? Well, um, because healthcare workers routinely have face-to-face -face contact with people who are ill, we want to make absolutely sure that healthcare workers have and use appropriate personal protective equipment to prevent them from being exposed. And uh, th this is important because as we inform individuals who are ill, if they suspect that they've been a contact or something like that, that they must report to a healthcare facility first that they have that suspicion so that healthcare facilities can take appropriate measures 
to prevent unrecognized exposure or have individuals just sitting in a waiting room or in an emergency department where healthcare workers might be exposed. Do they have the necessary supplies to do that? Do they have enough masks, everything else? Um, we believe that supplies are adequate. There may be delays in uh, the delivery, but I would need, um, or we would ask the, um, the hospital association or healthcare facilities to respond to that specifically. As far as funding, uh, do you, where is that coming from for the, the test kits and will we need additional funding as this kind of goes on? Uh, the funding is coming from DHEC right now, from our uh, funds, but the uh, U.S. government has um, approved either 8.3 or 8.9 billion dollars to be distributed, and they're working on that methodology as to how to appropriately distribute those funds to the various states, um, D.C. and Puerto Rico, um, as well as to the tribal uh, entities within the nation. So there are additional funds that are going to be prepared, distributed, um, and that will be very important as this continues because we do expend dollars, and it's wonderful for the U.S. government to step up to help public health departments across the country and states across the country in this expense. Now, we know that washing your hands for 20 seconds is kind of the minimum amount of time, singing the happy birthday and everything. Can you just confirm whether or not the temperature of the water that you wash your hands in affects whether or not it kills germs successfully? Because we've been told that some schools across <coughs> South Carolina don't have access to hot water in the school bathroom. No, the temperature of the water doesn't matter in terms of germ killing. It is for comfort and uh, you couldn't get the water hot enough to kill germs. So it is the soap and the warm water that is recommended, and the soap is what is effective. The temperature of the water doesn't matter. Dr. Bell, we know the two now confirmed positive cases were the 30, in her 30s-year-old woman from Charleston and the 8-year-old, in her 80s, woman from uh, Kershaw. Can we get the ages, age range of the other five presumptive positive cases? Um, we're just referring to them as, as adults because the, um, the actual age of individuals really doesn't matter. Uh, what's really most important is for the population to be aware, as the governor said, of those who are at risk of uh, possible complications. So it is older individuals who can uh, potentially experience complications, but the ages of the actual cases is not um, of, um, of necessary importance in terms of what we do differently from a public health perspective. Dr. Bell, I know you said they were in, uh, all of the presumptive positive cases were in stable condition. Are they all in good condition, or is it just consistent? Uh, um, they're all in good condition. We know that the flu season, well, the flu has a season that it comes to end. Are we expecting this virus to go well into the spring and summer, or do we not know enough information about that yet? Uh, <clears throat> because this is a novel virus and we've never actually experienced this virus in a warm season, that's um, unknown, but we are looking at other viruses that are genetically similar to this, and um, respiratory illnesses tend to be more active in the winter months, but um, this particular virus is, mo is more, um, we've had more transmission internationally than we saw with other genetically similar viruses, so it's really unknown if we'll continue to see high activity in the warm months. Do we know if there are any South Carolinians that are currently um, restricted from traveling back to South Carolina because of this virus if they were traveling abroad? If South Carolinians are being detained in other jurisdictions, I'm not sure. Since there is community spread in Kershaw County, any particular message to the people there, and uh, you know, because they're probably on heightened awareness, and whether there might be community spread in Spartanburg and Charleston, et cetera? Well, we want to emphasize that really just because we've identified these cases, that the message we've always given is really the same. Uh, what is needed, though, is for people to really take that message seriously. It's the same message that we give during every flu season to stay home when you're sick. And, um, and we believe that people often don't take that message seriously. And so what we need now is not really a different message, but it's a behavior change so that people do take responsibility for uh, protecting their coworkers and their uh, community from disease spread because um, if people are ill, we ask that they not be out and about and that they limit their um, activity from public gatherings, from work, and from school. And for those that were already infected, is it possible for them to get the virus again? Or do we know enough information about that yet? Um, 
the possibility of reinfection with the same virus, um, because we are, this is a new virus, is unknown. It's unlikely. Governor Masker, sure. you talk about price gouging with hurricanes. We've seen vanity store shelves of hand sanitizer, clean wipes, things like that. Any statewide ideas of how to limit that, make sure stocks are running high here in the state? What we ask has <coughs> been stated over and over, we ask people just to follow the, the advice and instructions that have been given about very, very simple things to do. And at this point, that's, that's what they need, that's what everyone needs to do. Are there any further questions? Thank you for coming, and we'll keep you up to date.